Hello everybody and welcome back to Pasta TV. As you can see on the screen here, Chugga Conroy has put out his own statement about the recent allegations against him by multiple individuals. Now Chugga's response here is actually very lengthy and very in-depth, which is rare when it comes to people that are under these form of allegations. As we've covered with multiple other people, most recently Ouija Pie, a lot of the times there isn't even a response. But I would like to go through Chugga's response in detail, piece by piece, and understand exactly what he's saying, where he is coming from. Now this response did drop on the 16th of April, and it is currently the 18th of April, so if anything has been posted after the 18th, I have not seen it yet. But with that being said, let's jump into this response. So right away Chugga Conroy says, Hey everybody, it's been a long time since I last shared anything with you, but I now feel ready to give an update on how I've been doing and clear up some speculation on some incidents that have been brought up since my last message. Whenever something blows up online, people make a lot of incorrect assumptions based on not knowing the full story, and often assume the worst possible context. I would like to start by clearing up these misconceptions. I haven't wanted to reveal information about others, but I think at this point it's best that everything is out in the open. I've removed irrelevant personal information as I only want to say as much as I need to in order to set the record straight. Please do not bother anybody I name here, I do not want others to experience what I went through. I have already asked that people not harass my accusers, and it is disappointing to see this ignored or not respected. I truly don't want anyone to be attacked over this." Now right away, this is the start of a good response. He's saying, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty, I'm just going to tell you what you need to know to clear up any misconceptions, this is just going to be my side of the story since I haven't put that out yet. Good, I like that. Now, this response specifically details three individuals and three accusers, Masai, Lady Emily, and Lolly. And he goes through each and every one step by step. First, regarding Masai. Masai and I dated for 10 years and we were engaged to be married. It fell apart about three years ago now. In every video you've ever seen us together in, I was her boyfriend and our friends all knew about it. You're probably wondering how this stayed a secret for so long. We both wanted our private lives to be hidden at the beginning. After the engagement, I wanted to share it, but Masai stayed firm that it remained private. She was never clear to me as to why, but I respected her wishes until it was necessary to clear this up. We loved each other, and I thought the world of her, but we had a difficult breakup. Losing her was the hardest thing I'd ever gone through, and I regret how emotional I got about it and the way I handled it. That is what happened between us. We would both like to never hear about one another again, and I sympathize with her getting bombarded about my situation after a breakup. The feeling she expressed goes both ways, and I don't wish to be associated with her going forward in any capacity either. As for her video cameo after the breakup, I did that because I believed we were still friends and just taking a break from each other, but once she told me she didn't want them, I stopped. I have strong feelings about the way it was said, but I'm asking you nicely to not run away with speculation about her, because I know what that feels like. And if you felt bad for enjoying our old videos, don't. I still look back on them fondly and personally assure you that we were happy and having fun in them. The time for that is just over now." Now this part of the response, I completely understand and respect. I mean, they were in a relationship for a very long time, but Chugga is a very well-known figure on YouTube. So his significant other not wanting that to be out in the open, it's common and it makes sense. Sometimes the significant other of someone who's famous does not also want to be famous and does not want their identity online to just specifically be tied to that famous person. It makes sense, it's respectable, after they broke up they didn't want anything to do with each other, it happens, understood. Now he gets into the details about Lady Emily. Lady Emily was the original accuser as far as I remember, the first one I ever made a video about, and this is where all like the foot fetish stuff came into play and where all the like people calling him a weirdo came into play. This is very important to hear his side of the story. It says, In 2023, Emily contacted me through a friend who spelled out how our conversation made her feel. I was shocked by it, apologized to her, and to some friends I had said slash done similar things with. It was well received among the people I talked to, and I'd like to say here that I'm sorry to anyone who hasn't heard this from me. I'd hope to tell you on my own terms. This was genuinely the first time this behavior was met so negatively to my face. At the time, I was told that this would not go public as long as I never did it again, which I have not done since. I took it to heart and sought professional help immediately. I felt like shit for months and was seeing a therapist about it every week, and by the start of January, I felt I was making some great strides in improving. I took Emily's words seriously and was doing my best to take responsibility, but unfortunately, it all ended up going public anyway. It crushed me inside that despite my efforts, Emily and many others would see me as irredeemable. I want to dispel a few things said about me by Emily. I didn't ask her for foot pictures constantly. 
I asked once if I could see a picture of her wearing the shoes I bought for her, which I honestly didn't realize would make her uncomfortable. I've gone through our logs and can find no evidence of the claim that I was constantly asking, or that it was of her bare feet. I don't think this is a fair summary of our chats. My kink doesn't define every aspect of my life. I bought Emily shoes because she told me that hers were damaged and needed replacing, then told me it was almost her birthday half an hour later. It was spur of the moment, and I just wanted to help out a friend. I've also made jokes about feet and bought shoes for most of my friends throughout my life, even for people like Tim. Now this part of the response is absolutely true. People did take the one side of the story and run with it, saying that he was constantly asking for feet pics from Lady Emily. I myself am guilty in a previous video of being a little harsh on Chugga with only hearing one side of the story. He continues by showing some DMs between the two of them. Him saying, nice sneakers, and her responding with, thank you, I need new ones to be honest, my everyday pair is starting to see some damage. And then he says that's due to the fabric, she says yeah of course they're cheap shoes, and the conversation goes on and it does seem pretty normal. He says there's a break here just talking about video games etc and they're talking about Zelda and other games. And then she mentions that it's her birth month, he asks for her birthday and she gives it to him. And then he says do you have a PO box and she says this is my address you can send it here and he says thank you, pretty normal stuff. It continues on just them talking about Zelda some more and then he asks what size shoe are you and he, she says 10 and then he mentions that he's gonna get her a birthday present and it, it, like I said pretty normal conversation for friends. He then says she would encourage my role play and jokes about shoes and even consented and participated. I checked in multiple times to make sure it was really okay and trusted her with a sensitive part of myself so that she wouldn't feel misled or like I had ulterior motives. I think that's also why I didn't particularly try to hide this. I thought I was being dumb with consenting friends and at worst that it was a little embarrassing and my kink was probably one reason I liked the subject. My partner read through what Emily posted and thought the tone was silly, not over the line of what's sexual or romantic for me. I'd trust her opinion on that more than my own. I was also evaluated by medical professionals about my shoe talk. Their view was that it was a way to feel close to a friend and escape in times of high stress and tragedy. It would resurface whenever things got particularly bad. And then here we see their DMs, him saying, I hope you don't mind all the foot jokes, I guess I just latched onto that after you told me about it, I'm not sure if it's a sensitive subject for you or anything. And she says, no it's fine, I don't mind, and says it's all good, I hope your day was good and all that stuff. And she doesn't seem bothered by it at all. And he says, yeah, I'm being forward with you because I'd rather not keep anything from you and let you make the best decision for you. I am into that, but only with my significant other. I just also like talking about shoes with people because it's also an interest. I talked with my significant other about this when we started dating, and she told me that I can talk about shoes with other people because it isn't sexual with my friends. It's just something I enjoy talking about with friends too. I know that might be a lot to share, and I'm sorry if it is, but I feel it's best just be open with people and consider what I'd like to know if I was in their position. And Lady Emily says, no, no, I'm glad to know. Good to have that openness and common understanding. And then he goes on to continue the conversation. And this says, the next day, here's what an uncut talk between us looked like as it transitioned into a roleplay. And we can see here it goes from them talking about games to talking about shoes. And it's, you know, it might be a little weird, but it is, as you can see here, consenting. Everyone's agreeing to it. It's not overtly sexual. Just a little strange. You know, it continues on with her making jokes about like Paper Mario shoes and just like, you know, it, it's it's pretty goofy and lighthearted and nothing extreme. Chugga continues saying, this is the tone of the conversation that led to the roleplay. I think, honestly, that it reads as pretty silly from both of us. I remember when this happened. I was just playing a video game and laughing to myself when she'd add to it because it was all so out there and dumb. I cackled at her sticker star joke. My girlfriend wanted to add that Emily's decision to include personal information about her was greatly upsetting to her. Emily needlessly pushed the territory my girlfriend lives in. This was not public knowledge and did nothing to prove any point. In Emily's screenshots, I'm open about having a girlfriend and told her my significant other was fine with all of this. Our relationship had no bearing on any of this and never needed to be brought up. I also want to say that I never lied about how this was resolved privately. In my original statement, I said, when you communicated this to me privately a few months ago, I apologized to you directly and promised I would never repeat this kind of behavior again with anyone else. I worded things that way to protect the friend who mediated, as involving others was something I wanted to avoid. I promised my friend I would never repeat this, we discussed it for hours, they told Emily how it went, and then I sent Emily this apology. And the apology reads, in quotes, name a friend who Emily reached out to, Talk to me about this. I apologize for everything that I did. I will not reach out again. I am sorry. I never claimed we had a conversation about it. I said it was communicated privately, which it was. I don't think a friend being there contradicts that. And in my opinion, this apology that he sent to her privately, as lackluster as it is, is very direct, which in this situation 
is fine. You know, considering the conversations that they had, considering what was just shown to us in DM form, it doesn't seem like he was aggressively sexual. And since he was just told secondhand that it made her uncomfortable, he said, Hey, this person told me you were uncomfortable. Sorry for anything I did. I'll back off. That's it. And, and that's fine. That seems like an okay apology. He continues, I don't retract any apology about hurting her or pestering her for a reply. Nothing I've said changes that I did that. I just felt this important context was left out. This is what I was working with and why I was so comfortable doing this. I kept asking if it was okay and kept doing it because she said she enjoyed it. I wanted to be open with someone I cared about rather than just assume, and gave her my word that I wouldn't go into sexual territory for myself. It still wasn't a good way to act, I just hope it's understandable how I could think this way. And that, I'm glad he brought that up, because as I'm reading this response, I remembered there was one thing he did that did bother me in the original DMs. He kept messaging her over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and it, it really was like, it seemed like pestering. It seemed like he was bothering her. And he does bring that up. He said, yes, I did that and I don't really have an excuse, but this is the added context. This is what makes it feel to me that I wasn't really being that awful of a person. And it does help. It does make me feel like Chugga wasn't being this horrendous like predator, right? He might have just been a little annoying, which is a lot better and way less offensive. And he continues on that saying, Due to an autism spectrum disability, I struggle with understanding social cues or people's limits. I don't hide behind this as a shield from criticism, I've learned to live with it. I learned I couldn't always trust myself to say the right thing or not take things too far due to my inability to see social situations the same way as other people. Doctors have told me this is what happens to me. To make up for this weakness, I learned many years ago to be open with people, relying on permission, asking questions, and requesting others to tell me if something becomes too much. That is what I did with Emily. But despite that, she never once communicated that I said anything that made her uncomfortable until she was considering going public. And that's it right there. And I know a lot of people already knew this about Chugga Conroy, so this isn't like world shattering information. But him coming out and specifically saying, because of my disability, I cannot read social cues as well as other people. I've been diagnosed. And that is specifically why I was asking Emily over and over if it was okay. And that perfectly describes why he would hit her up all the time over and over because he doesn't know the social cues he doesn't know the boundaries he just he's just saying hi again and again and again to him that's normal he goes on to say i was confused when she started ignoring my messages i don't do well with being ignored it just makes me worry a lot about the other person because i do best with open communication when i have nothing to work with i can't really understand what someone is thinking and in this case I thought she liked how it was going. It usually leads to me just wishing each day will be the day I get to hear they're okay. I've learned now that repeated messages like this can be stressful to others. I did everything she wanted me to do once she told me that she didn't like it and took it into my own hands to get mental help and learn more about my issues. It's perfectly fine to revoke consent or decide it's getting to be too much, but this wasn't told to me. I was told the opposite of that. This isn't a case of I only listened when I got caught. I did listen. And I have to say, if someone is very close to Chugga Conroy, like Lady Emily seemed to be, you would assume that she knew Chugga's condition. He does seem to be very open about what's going on with him, and open about needing consent and need to be told what's okay from other people. So the fact that Lady Emily started to feel uncomfortable with what Chugga was doing, and went and told one of his friends instead of telling him directly, that makes me understand why this all became a misunderstanding. Chugga is someone who needs to be told directly if something is okay or if something is not okay. If he's not told that, he will assume it's going okay if that's the last thing that was perceived by him. The fact that his friend had to tell him Emily was uncomfortable, and then Chugga had to internalize that and then go to Emily and be like, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable, I don't understand how I did, but I'm sorry and I'll back off. That seems to be a logical course of action here. It just surprises me that someone who is a close friend to him doesn't understand the basics of how he works. But now we're moving on. We're moving on to the next person who is Lolly. Now this was some of the chats that Chugga Conroy had when he was 19 and Lolly was 14. So these were some pretty serious allegations and definitely need to be cleared up. So he starts by saying, there was a chat log shared from back in 2010 when I was 19. About this, I am not a PDF file and I'm not a groomer. I was an idiot teenager who made dirty jokes. I had no intention of doing anything to this person, quite the opposite in fact. This post is taking two separate things over a decade apart and showing them together. When I was a teenager, 
I said lots of dumb things I shouldn't have. I'm 34 years old now and can't stand by anything I may have typed that long ago. I don't think anyone could. What I can do is tell you my intentions. To give an idea of how long ago this chat was, when I was 19, TRG didn't exist. I'd never appeared at a single convention. I hadn't started college. I still lived at home. I made videos as a hobby slash wasn't professional, and I was working on my first Pokemon Let's Play. I don't think something that old should be treated as representative of the person that I am now, in any sense. It was so long ago that I learned the contents of this log existed when you did. I was extremely hurt to be judged for something from so long ago, and that the headline was worded like I assaulted someone. I'm gonna stop right here because I agree and disagree with some of what he's saying. 2010 was a very different time. It doesn't feel like that long ago to an old man like me, but it really, really was in terms of the internet. There were a lot of like really raunchy, dirty, uncomfortable jokes that a lot of people made back then that would never fly today. And some of the chat log that I read between him and Lolly seemed like they were just being edgy in 2010 terms. Other things that were said there did seem inappropriate. And I don't believe that saying I was only 19 years old is a proper excuse, which he may address later on. He, he might, and we'll keep reading. But the fact that he was an adult and she was a child makes it a little uncomfortable. And some of the things they said were just not cool to say, no matter what time it was. But let's continue. The internet was a very different place then, and being facetious was everywhere. It was like our escape from censorship, and the edgier the better. It was easy to get caught up in the moment and say things I didn't mean when I was that young too. You need look no further than my terrible old videos for the tasteless things I thought were hilarious at that age, or how my sense of humor has changed, or how internet culture as a whole changed. It might be hard to imagine, but back then, people commonly threw around vulgar language and joked about horrible things like it was nothing. That is very true. That ties into what I just said. 2010 was a wi the wild west of the internet. You could basically say anything, and the more offensive you were, the more people laughed. And I don't necessarily agree with how things were at that time, but it is how things were. He says, some people were concerned about one part where I said, I'm going to you, and then said something about a video with a cat. This wasn't a serious conversation. It was a popular meme at the time, and I'm sure it was quoting this video. I remember all of my friends quoting it on a daily basis back then, and it was like the biggest thing ever. I already think I know what video he's going to post. Yeah, I I'm, I'm not going to play it <laughs> because the language will probably demonetize me. But um, yeah, if you want, just look this video up on YouTube called Some Guy Yells at Some Cats. And it's, yeah, he's basically just yelling offensive language at his cats. As for the... Can I say this on YouTube? As for the pedo crush line, I don't even remember saying it. It was 14 years ago. Probably a joke that was topical. Pedo bear was an enormous meme at the time, yes he was, and jokes dunking on PDF files were just what internet humor was like then. Loli equals pedo was a common joke, and given her username, an easy one. I definitely learned a long time ago that these sorts of jokes aren't cool and could be hurtful to victims. Society moved on from this many years ago, as I have too. You can see the difference between then and now by just looking at anything I type. Most of the rest of the chat is just boring talk about video games that we liked. Even given the time, if you still felt like that chat was getting out of hand, I agree with you. In fact, I agreed with that when I was 19. Lolly said she doesn't know why our chats ended abruptly, and I can tell you exactly why. It was because I disliked the direction of these chats and how young she was and I've told her this numerous times. After a few conversations, I took a step back and realized this could not continue. She would constantly initiate raunchy topics with my 19-year-old self. I was oblivious at first, thought it was just funny shitposting, played off their behavior as a joke, and thought of them as a friend with a dirty sense of humor like many of my friends back then. And we see a small clip from their chat down here, with Lolly saying, Fine, now I'll possess you forever and talk to you and be like, I see dead people, and then make you touch yourself in public. And he says, why are all the things you do to me sexual? You really do want me. And she goes facepalm. So it is her, at least in this instance, initiating the sexual conversation. He goes on to say, after a little while, things started to escalate, and then they sent a sexually explicit gift to my house. It made me realize that they weren't being silly. They were romantically interested in me, not the other way around. The whole thing made me and my mother uncomfortable. And after deliberation, I not only rejected them, but cut all contact with them. I actually talk about this in the log they posted, and our contact becomes a lot less frequent after that. You can see after this point we go long periods of time without talking, and I just tell her I'm busy or need to get going. 
I don't look exactly thrilled about this gift. And she says, ooh, you got it? And he was like, dot, 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 was waiting for you. She says, well, sorry, my stalker senses aren't tingling. And he goes, my mom told me I'm not allowed to wear the shirt. Which makes me curious what sexually explicit shirt was gifted to him, but that's neither here nor there. He says, I did not speak to this person for another 10 years. I had no intention of ever reestablishing contact. 10 years later, they approached me at a convention, and that was how we became friends again. I thought after that long, she was a new person and deserved a second chance. If you need more than just my word that it was joking around and I was the one who stopped it, here's proof. This is me telling the story to them in 2021 and their reaction to it. The ages are slightly off due to fuzzy memory, but this was the event that caused me to cut contact. And here we see DMs between Chugga Conroy and Lolly. Chugga says, based on my past rejection of you, I don't think I have to justify that I wouldn't to you. And she says, you rejected me? And he goes, okay, I was going to save this story for when we were in a call, but I guess it's on topic. Plus, like, it's been weeks. And she goes, oh God, what did I do? And he says, the shirt you sent me. My mom found that soon after I got it and asked me why the heck I had something like that. I told her my friend sent it to me. She immediately goes, this girl has a crush on you. No doubt about it. I go, oh, well, she's 14. I was 18 at the time. My mom told me I can't associate with that and that it was dangerous, so I better keep my distance. As much as I liked spending time with you, I chose to slowly fade out and hoped you'd find someone else. That was why I fell out of your life for a few years. And she says, oh, that makes sense. I was going to say I would never have told you I had a crush on you. I was a big chicken. And he responds, I know, at least I'm pretty sure of it. Once my mom said that, I sort of analyzed a lot of things you said and did. It made a lot more sense after that. The conversation continues with her saying, did you think I was a cop or something? And he says, I mean, I was pretty sure you were you, but I didn't want to abuse or hurt you with an unfair relationship. So regardless, it was a hard no for me at that time. And she says, honestly, as an adult, I can appreciate that you set a boundary. He goes, I'm glad. I was worried you wouldn't like me anymore back then because I was intentionally snubbing you at least some of the time. It was something of a relief when you were happy to see me at Con Bravo. And she says, I just figured you were busy and moved on with life. He said, I kind of had that as a passive excuse. I was hitting the big time around then. I've always enjoyed spending time with you, but at those ages, I wasn't gonna let something develop on either side. I wanted you to go find other people. You were still a kid and wouldn't have had time for that. This is perfectly, a perfectly respectable conversation. These accusations were probably the most damning because it involved a child, but the fact that he even caught up with her and told her it was never gonna happen, the fact that he caught contact, the fact that he like came to realize I should not be doing this before anything happened, good on him. Another side of this is that I confided in them as a teen about the girl I liked at the time. It's not them. And this is their older conversation and him saying, there's a girl who I think might like me, and I told her something like that last night. I swear to God, she got so risen up from her depression. And Lolly says, is someone you know personally or just another fan? He says, she started off as a fan. She's hopefully going to this thing in June that I'm going to be at for a few weeks. Pretty much all my friends are begging me to go for that time. And she goes, he has an online love. It, it kind of seems like she thinks he means her, but he doesn't <laughs> mean her. <laughs> all right. His response continues saying, was their humor not acceptable by today's standards? Sure. This was half of my life ago now. I lacked the experience I have now, and I think this shows I had no romantic or physical interest in them as a teen. And even back then, once I knew it wasn't a game to them, I rejected it and backed off. It upset me when I learned they wanted me. It put so many things they said into perspective and creeped me out, and I can see it when I read the logs again. This was my learning experience about why even jokes like this aren't a good idea, and I've never said anything like this to a minor in the 14 years since. I specifically remember telling my mom that leaving that friendship was the most caring thing to do for this person, which is 100% true. I mean, if a child has feelings for you, you as the adult need to be like, ah, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> you stay over there. I want nothing to do with this. And that seems like what he did. Speaking as someone who suffered a lot as a child, I have many ground rules involving minors and have taken these sort of things immensely seriously ever since. I read through all of it, and to my surprise, she's the one who initiates the roleplay. She's the one who pretends to tickle my feet and goes much farther than that too. She was the origin of it, at least in this chat. I don't know if she's where I got the idea from, but it's possible. I guess it's neither here nor there, but I didn't know I was into that at 19 anyway. The next point is something I was unsure about publishing for months. I hate that this is relevant and I would not be sharing this if they didn't post anonymously. I cut contact with them thinking they just had an innocent crush that needed to stop. It was a lot worse than that. I was disturbed to find they admitted that in those old chats, their goal was to manipulate me into having sex with them. Here are two separate times they told me this story, as well as the time we briefly touched on it. And this, after giving this a brief glance, is insane. 
This right here is a conversation between Chugga Conroy and Lolly, where Lolly admits to trying to manipulate older men as a child into sex, which is insane. She goes, she says, no clue. Blank told me younger was better. So I thought you'd like me more if I told you my age. And Chugga said, yeah, I would not have gone for a 14 year old when I was 18. So I can't say I agree with him there. Four years isn't so bad this far in, but at 14, you're still finding a lot of what life is, and I'd see that as predatory. Yes, Chugga, I agree with you. She continues saying, yeah, I, uh, when I was underage, I wanted to F an older guy so badly. It just so happened all the predators around me were inept, and I just trolled them for being thirsty. Chugga responds, oh my god, oof, I'm very thankful you didn't end up with one of those, holy shit. I can see blank really warped your views. She responds, he really did. Thankfully, I have zero sexual attraction to people that I don't love. And all the thirsty weirdos didn't do it for me. And I was and am an asshole, so I literally just fucked with them. Chugga says, man, here I thought you had a harmless childhood crush on me. Didn't know you wanted to F me ASAP. And she says, I am violently sexual. It continues with Chugga saying, but absolutely, I would not have let you do that regardless of how well we got along. And she says, younger me would be disappointed. Current me appreciates it. She says, I'm glad as well. I guess it just seemed like an unrelated statement. I also remember uh, you were really off put by my age, but I was like, I don't see the problem because blank always talked about younger girls being better. So I was like, legitimately what? And Chugga says, you told me that story. It's kind of messed up. She goes, it's honestly a miracle. No one took advantage of me as a kid. He says that she's very fortunate. And she says, I wanted an older dude really badly when I was a kid too. Like I literally had a goal of having underage sex and was depressed when I turned 16. And Chugga says, I'm happy that you never got hurt back then. You're the luckiest person alive. Now, this part right here is just, this is the floodgates opening. This is mind blowing. The whole lolly accusations were completely flipped. It was her that was trying to harass and manipulate older guys into doing something with her when she was a kid. And Chugga was kind of her victim. Now, I know I can't go and call someone who's underage a predator or that manipulative or anything. Obviously, there were struggles and traumas and stuff that caused her to act this way, but Chugga was in a very vulnerable position as well, and it's the right thing to do for him to completely cut it off. Like I said, as the adult in the situation, he did the right thing. He continues in his response saying, I think the whole picture here changes everything about their side of the logs. Their framing of events to make me look like the predator really upset me when I saw this again. Regardless of some jokes on a screen, this is the real tragedy I prevented from happening. I refuse to be their friend for so much less than their actual motive. It wasn't just me either. They said they targeted multiple older adults for sex. My feelings about this are complicated. It's horrible in so many ways that they wanted to use me for underage sex and then frame it like I was preying on them because of some text from 14 years ago. But I also feel for them when I think about how bad their situation probably was. As for the modern stuff they showed, that was after more than a decade of no contact. I had only vague recollections of what our conversations were like back then, and years into this new friendship, I was asking if, as adults, they wanted to text roleplay but spicy. I was forward about that so they wouldn't think I just wanted silly stuff like I remember doing in those days. For the record, I was single, and they were fine with me asking. I wasn't in a good headspace when I asked them for roleplay stuff, it was the worst year of my life. I think I just wanted to feel close to someone I cared about in the loneliness. She told me she liked slash missed the roleplay, so I thought it natural to ask. Plus, by that point, we've been friends again for years. It was 12 years since I cut contact, I didn't even remember most of our old talks, and we'd put our awkward past behind us. So any bad implications weren't exactly there for me. Save for the one time they ran into me as an adult, I have only ever known this person online. Nothing else ever happened. This was the first time I had asked them for anything since learning what I liked. More on that in a second. If Lolly is reading this, I'm sorry I made you hurt, I don't think what I said changes that, and I mean it. Though, I guess I'm surprised by this. We were friends up until this, got along better as adults, and I was glad to have you in my life without the inappropriate crush. It was basic knowledge to both of us that you were the one who wanted me, and I shut it down. I even apologized last year for asking for roleplay stuff, and you said you forgave me and considered me a true friend. I don't really know what you were thinking. I didn't even remember these chats, so I was genuinely confused by what you'd even be speaking out about when I heard it was you. It hurt a lot to see you say that you don't know if I ever considered you a real friend. I told you that you were awesome and funny and smart, a lot. We got each other through difficult times, you were a bright spot in my darkest time, and I admired you for it. I spent your birthday with you. You mattered to me so much, and we just had a nice conversation about how much we care about each other right before this too. 
I want you to know that I cried when I wrote this because it was the moment where it really hit me that I will never speak to you again. The hardest part of all this was going through our chats to find proof of my intentions. In doing so, I opened a time capsule of a beautiful friendship that doesn't exist anymore and saw all the very real ways we helped each other. I wish you talked to me about it. I would have listened. I saw you as a friend for life. Please don't get angry at the person who posted those chat logs. They were looking out for their friend slash former friend, and it's possible they didn't have this context either. They were being a good friend. Whew, that is a lot. I mean, I can't say that I'm surprised after learning what type of person Lolly was in those Discord messages. I'm not really surprised that she would throw Chugga under the bus and try to manipulate it into making him look like the bad guy because she seemed like a very manipulative person from the start, considering she was trying to manipulate older men into sex, and that kind of just shows what type of person she is. I mean, she had to go find all those old chat logs, manipulate them in a way to make it look like Chugga was the, the predator and take out all the stuff of him wanting to cut contact and put it publicly and try to frame him. That takes a very spiteful, manipulative individual to do that. But after seeing this response and after seeing all this context, it's obviously something that Chugga regrets, even, even making those jokes he regrets, and he specifically backed off, and it seemed like maybe she was faking a friendship with him. That's how it feels just reading this. He continues on to talk about himself when he was 19, saying, I have something else that speaks to where my mind was at when I was 19. I didn't want to open up about this at any point, but it's part of this now. I've mentioned in the past that I didn't live the happiest childhood. Due to an especially traumatic time when I was assaulted as a child, I was left unable to enjoy sex until well into my adult life. The idea of anything sexual beyond edgy teenage jokes on the internet was foreign to me at 19, and I think my awkwardness shows it. While I may not know why I sent every little I am 14 years ago, I know what state my body and mind were in at the time, how I struggled with comprehending anything sexual, and how it hindered my attempts at relationships. Even with people I was comfortable dating, I struggled with concepts like them seeing me naked or enjoying sex for years after that. You can see this in my videos with how inept I was at knowing about sex for so long or how I could say unfortunate things and not realize it. Perhaps this is also why I didn't shut things down sooner and how I didn't think of what their overall sexual messages could mean, besides people just being dumb as fuck at 19. I had no experience or understanding of sexual situations. It took my mom pointing it out for me to see what was going on. I just matched the vibe of my funny friend until it became too much and then I left. Because of this accusation, I had to explain what I went through as a kid to several friends who wanted an explanation. It was humiliating and excruciating to relive it with them and I cried every time. I was trying to essentially train myself to publicly tell every detail, but it became clear after enough hard cries and nightmares that I wouldn't be able to do that and be okay. It brought me back to terrible places I thought I was done with. I was doing so well at not letting it affect me for a few years now, but this dredged it all up. And now I'm here telling you, it's out there forever now. I'm sorry, I know it's a lot. And this might actually be the most painful part to read. Because knowing that Chugga had these childhood traumas and never really talked about it, and all this was put out there to the public eye and him being forced to relive it and tell people finally what happened to him, that is not easy for anyone to do. And him even typing this must have taken a lot of strength. So props to him for that. He continues saying, It's humiliating to tell you even this much. In order to be believed, I have to tell everyone about my childhood trauma, my sex life, my health issues, my breakup, what went on in therapy, the mental ward, how my accuser wanted to use me for sex, and how I almost died because of this. It's extremely painful to talk about. People think they're owed that from me, and no one will listen if I just say, I didn't mean it or I was only a teenager. This is the price I've paid to show I wasn't preying on someone. I refuse to call it a win that I could explain myself in this way. I didn't win when I went through that. After my recent psychological training, I think my childhood trauma is also how I went through so much of my life thinking that there was a clear line between my kink and my interest in shoes. Also just how normal the roleplay felt. I had only my interest for most of my life. My roleplaying started innocently long before I enjoyed anything physical or even knew that I had a kink. All I knew for a long time was, I think shoes are funny, and I didn't think it was particularly strange that I worked them into stories or talked about them that much. I would act out stories about my own shoes when I was little and just never really stopped doing things like that. It's also where a lot of my sense of humor has always been, and it really was just a joke for many years. The realization that there could be some crossover happened much later in life. I compartmentalized things into what was sexual and what wasn't, 
probably because I did it for so long without a kink, and thought I could go on separating those things by not saying anything arousing for me. It was just very messy and flawed logic for a lot of reasons, and intertwined with something I struggled to make sense of. I definitely needed psychiatric help for this, and I'm really sorry to everyone I hurt because of it. Now this, this kind of makes sense. A lot of people will derive their kinks either from trauma when they were kids, or they won't realize it's a kink early in life, it's just something that they find interesting or find funny, and then it just develops and develops from there. So him not really understanding his own brain when it comes to this, that does make sense. He says, Enjoying sex is still a problem for me at 34, depending on how much I'm reminded of my past. My ability to enjoy it has only existed for a few sections of my life, and I still go months to years without it. I wouldn't even say the kink I mentioned is that strong these days. It's been a long time since I enjoyed it. It's also associated with trauma now, so I don't think I'll be into that for a long time. It sounds gross. When looking at a full picture of accusations, I want to take this moment to say I've never assaulted or threatened anyone. Every single thing shown was entirely in text messages and fiction. It went no further than that. I feel that wasn't acknowledged much in the heat of all this. I guess it is pretty weird. I don't think I deserve to nearly be driven to unaliving myself, to have so many personal details revealed, or to watch the health of people I love decline. And then for the harassment to continue after it got to that point, especially when I took this seriously enough before anything became public. I also absolutely made the right decision to leave that toxic friendship that wasn't fair to Lolly, and I already made that choice 14 years ago to the month. Every single issue here was already resolved privately a long time ago. I can't even imagine the hardships that Chugga and the people around him felt when all of this went public, especially considering that they thought it was already solved issues and not knowing where half this was coming from. Now there are some more things that Chugga talks about, about going to the mental ward and about his time afterwards and how he's doing now. A lot of that involves very sensitive topics that YouTube is not very friendly to, but I do definitely recommend that you go read it. It is all in this tweet chain, it's all in the Google Doc that he put out, it's all there. Highly, highly recommend reading through that. But he caps it all off with saying, Regardless of my clarifications and context, I definitely still made mistakes and learned lessons, as well as learned new things about how my mind works. I don't want to get carried away and make it sound like I'm 100% blameless. I needed psychiatric help for my depression and roleplay behavior. I took your criticism of my person seriously, and I'm forever working every day to ensure nothing like this could ever happen again. It will not happen again. I'm a fan of numbers, so let me show you. Since privately confronted about this, I saw my therapist six times before anything was made public, completed 11 behavioral health sessions with a psychologist, continuing to do so for the foreseeable future, spent five nights in a mental ward and have met with my doctors twice since then, read numerous medical articles to understand my own conditions better and how to avoid mistakes, have never missed a dosage of four medications and supplements that better regulate my brain activity, have not ever wanted to roleplay again, and I feel more self-aware and cognizant than at any point in my life up to this point. I can be absolutely certain I would never disappoint you like this again, and I say that knowing you will hold me to a higher standard than ever. I have and always will continue to give it my all in the psychiatric help I sought out. In my mind, nothing after my apology changed that I meant every word and was already in the process of making good on all of this, months before anything went public. Some of these I learned and grew from many years ago. I would have been here to tell you this sooner had my mental trauma not kept me from it. I needed to heal. And just because I know it'll come up, I have to be real. This whole experience was so harmful to my health. I'm not sure that I even want this job anymore. I don't know if the life I would have if I started making videos again would be anything I would like. And it sucks to admit that about something I have such a passion for. It's something I would have to think about for longer. What little creative energy I would have always goes towards this and not some fun video I wanted to make. I cared more about telling my side of it, fixing my problems, and improving my mental health. I'm in no state to perform, so do not expect me to show up at any events. I think many of you will still have criticisms for me. I anticipate many jokes at my expense too, and that's okay. I wouldn't have come here today if I didn't know and accept that. Thank you, and that's all I wanted to say. This response is great. <laughs> I, I have to give it to Chugga. This response not only is detailed, covers basically every topic that anyone had questions about, and tells a lot of personal information that he obviously really struggled to tell. I do still have criticisms for Chugga, but after reading this response, I don't think that there are criticisms that are serious enough to be worth talking about. He did the right thing by putting this out. It seems like it took everything that he had, which 
in in these times of the internet, when you're accused of this type of stuff, that's the right way to do it. He he put his all into this response, and I applaud him for it. That was fantastic. As someone who's made videos about his accusations in the past, this is exactly what I want from a content creator when this happens. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, same thing with like Ouija Pie or anyone who gets accused of, of bad stuff. Come out, put your all into your response, and the the public, the general public, your fan base, everyone will see, wow, he meant that. And that's what's important. So this response is all a long Twitter thread that he posted, but there's also a Google Doc, which I will link in the description of this video. If any other updates happen, like I said, it's the 18th now. If any other updates happen after today, I will talk about it. If there's anyone else that you would like me to, to look into and discuss, let me know in the comments below. I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Other updates happen after today. I will talk about it. If there's anyone else that you would like me to, to look into and discuss, let me know in the comments below. I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.